Want to know how to get great folder-style flat embossing with your Cricut Maker? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm Kay of CleverSomeday.com, and that's what I'm going to teach you in this video. Thanks for joining me. Back in 2017, I did my first tutorial on Cricut flat embossing using the Explorer and the Scoring Stylus. It gave great results, but for various reasons, most notably the need for additional software, it never caught on like I'd hoped. Now we not only have the Maker debossing tool, but some long-awaited changes to design space that should breathe new life into this fun and effective technique. So here's the general idea in case you missed the 2017 video. We cut a design out of cardstock to make an embossing stencil. Then we overlay another piece of cardstock on top of that and let the Maker trace the inside edges with its debossing tip to create a raised design on the opposite side. In this year's edition, we're also going to take things a step further and have the Cricut cut out our embossed cardstock to its final shape. For this project, we're going to need two sheets of cardstock, the debossing tool with quick swap housing, one inch wide low tack tape, and a new mat with plenty of stick. As for the cardstock, I'm using two different colors to help you and me keep them straight. I ultimately want to emboss white cardstock where it will show up the best. I pick a light to medium weight cardstock with a nice finish for my project. My favorite cardstock for embossing is Nina's Exact Vellum Bristol, 67 pounds. But really, most any cardstock will work. The pink sheet is what I'm going to make my stencil with. You want to pick a medium to heavy weight stock for that. The heavier, the better. But really, for either layer, you can probably use whatever cardstock you have available. I'm not crazy about this shade of pink, so it's the perfect candidate to become a disposable stencil. You can think of it this way. The white is my raw material, while the pink will serve as a tool. For the sake of time, I've already set up an A2 size folding note card, shown here in white, with score lines to represent the two folds. I've used the CC monogram font from Craft Chameleon to create the design I want to emboss, and that's shown in pink in position on the note card. When you create your own embossing design, make sure that it isn't too small or too detailed, especially while you're learning. In particular, you want to avoid having many or small interior cuts. It'll become apparent why as we work our way through. Because we need the debossing tool to go just inside the stencil's openings, it needs its own corresponding path. Thanks to Cricut's new offset feature, we can do this in Design Space at last. Select the design, Click the Offset button and type negative 0.02 in the distance box. Very important, negative 0.02 if you're using inches. In centimeters, that would be 0.05. Click Apply and you will see the design appear to turn black, but in reality, Design Space put an offset version on top of the original, which you can tell from the Layers panel. Now remember that the Cricut debosses or presses the design into the paper. So to get the embossed or raised design we want on the opposite side, we need to mirror our design. So I'm going to select everything and flip, flip horizontal. After this step, any text in our design will appear wrong reading. The next thing we need to do is put the design on the canvas where it belongs. And to be honest, I found this to be the trickiest part of the process. I'm going to use my what you see is what you get matte image to help explain things. But be aware that this isn't likely to make sense until we get to the end, and maybe not until you've tried it yourself. By using full letter size sheets, even though that's more than we need, it will be simpler to plan. The stencil stock needs to be at least an inch from the top and at least a half inch from the right and left edges. With that in mind, the convenient spot I picked for the letter size pink card stock in vertical orientation is flush with the grid at the bottom and lined up against the 9 inch grid line on the right. I need the overall design to fit within that with at least a half inch border on the left and right and a quarter inch on top and bottom. So that leaves me with the workable area shown here with a bold line. I'm going to move my whole design to X equals 2, Y equals 1.5 so it fits comfortably inside that area. We have the design elements we need laid out like we need them for cutting the stencil and for embossing and cutting the note card. But because that's going to take three separate runs, we need a way to keep things lined up perfectly. Design Space still doesn't support this directly, but there is a workaround. You may have heard me teach the dummy shape method for getting the virtual mat to match the design canvas, but here we're going to use it to get all three of our virtual mats to stay in sync with each other. Because Design Space keys off the upper left of the visible objects on a given mat, we're going to use dummy shapes 
one tiny circle in the upper left of each mat to be sure that design space is using the same frame of reference for all of them. I will need three dummy shapes, so I use the Shapes tool to add three circles to the canvas. I select all of them, select Center under the Align button, and change their size to something very, very small, like 0.01 inches for both width and height. With all three still selected, I go to the Position section and enter 0.25 for X and for Y. You'll see what looks like one little dot move to near the top left corner of the canvas. The next thing I need to do is sort out the various items onto the three separate mats. By that I mean three virtual mats or three runs. All of this has to eventually happen on one physical mat. If you aren't familiar, you can select multiple items by clicking the first one and then holding down the shift key as you select subsequent items. And you can select by clicking on the object itself or by clicking its row on the layers panel. You will definitely need to select by way of the layers panel to get to stacked items and to be sure you're selecting the correct ones. So using the layers panel, I'm going to select one dummy shape, which shows in the layers panel as a tiny circle, and the white note card layer marked basic cut, and select attach. Don't worry that the white moves to the top blocking our view, as that will correct shortly. And remember, you can drag layers around on the layers panel to change the stacking order, or recolor items at any time you need to. This set represents the final cut layer for the white card stock, so it stays on basic cut. Similarly, I'm going to select the next dummy shape and the pink layer marked basic cut and click attach. This is the stencil cutting layer, so it also stays on basic cut. I'm going to select the remaining dummy shape, the black layer that says offset, and both score lines and attach those. This last set will be using the debossing tool, both for the monogram and for the fold lines, so I'm going to select deboss from the operation pull down. Because the stencil cut and its offset are easily confused, be sure to double check that the offset layer is the one in the deboss set. Everything should now be in one of the three attached sets, with each set having its own dummy shape, so I'm ready to click Make It. On the left hand side of the prepare screen, you will see that we have successfully split our project into three separate mats a white mat marked deboss, a white mat marked basic cut, and a pink mat marked basic cut. It doesn't matter what order they're in. The dummy shapes have done their job to force the various elements into their same locations as on the design canvas, and this has also kept them in line with each other, just as we planned. The first mat we want to run is the stencil cut, so we click the pink mat on the right marked basic cut. Remember the design on this mat should be the mirror image of what we want to eventually be embossed. Click Continue. After it connects to the Maker, Design Space will ask us to choose a material. My stencil stock is 100 pound Recollections cardstock from Michaels, so I'm choosing my custom setting for that from my favorites at the top. Next it prompts us to load the fine point blade and the material. As I explained earlier, I'm going to place my letter sized pink cardstock on the very sticky mat flush with the bottom of the grid and lined up with the 9 inch mark on the right. I've also gone ahead and put a piece of tape across the bottom just because it's easier before the mat is loaded. Put the mat into the machine and press the load mat button. You probably know I like to use a stiff ruler tucked into the door slot of my maker to help support the mat, and I've done that here. We're ready to press the go button. It's going to do a mat check and a blade check, tap on the dummy shape, and then cut out my monogram from my heavyweight pink cardstock, which again is the stencil sheet. It's doing two passes here because of my setting. When it's done and with the mat still loaded, I'm going to remove the cutouts, being very careful not to shift the cardstock or the interior pieces. An X-Acto style knife or weeding tool is a big help here. If you're having trouble removing the pieces because it didn't cut cleanly, press the Go button to repeat the cut. Back at the computer, I click Dismiss at the top, then Cancel at the lower right, and on the next screen, click the green Yes in the orange stripe. In prior years, that click would unload the mat from the machine, but thanks to recent changes in design space, this is no longer the case, and we can return to the Prepare screen with the mat firmly gripped in the rollers, which is key. The next step is the debossing. So with the weeded stencil still firmly in place, I put my nice white cardstock on top, face down if it matters. I roughly line up the edges with the pink sheet below, 
and tape the right and left edges. I'm also going to swap out the blade for the debossing tool. It's the one marked 21. Click the white layer marked deboss on the prepare screen. This should have any score lines and a mirror image of the design you want embossed. Click continue. Again, it's going to ask for material, but here we're interested in a strong pressure to get a nice deep deboss. So we're going to tell Design Space we are using a very heavy material. I use 1.5 millimeter mat board setting, but you may need to experiment depending on the cardstocks you are using. You can ignore any warnings associated with the mat board setting, as those don't apply when you are just debossing. Because the mat is already loaded, it skips ahead to the prompt to press the Go button, which you can go ahead and do after double checking everything. It will do a mat check and blade check, so if you forgot to switch to the debossing tip, it will be caught here. The debossing tip will tap on the dummy shape, then do our score lines and trace around the inside of the stencil hiding below. You probably want to watch this part because it is just plain cool to see your design magically appear. Seems like this is a good time to ask you to give this video a thumbs up and to click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and a thank you if you already have. When it finishes, you'll be anxious to get a better look at it, but don't unload the mat or take the embossed piece off now, because we aren't done yet. At this point, we have the mat still in the machine, with a stencil on the bottom and a debossed piece of cardstock on the top. And we have to figure out how to cut that cardstock without losing our position or damaging our stencil. Here's where some choreography is needed and where our pre-planning pays off. Remove the tape from the left side, and be sure that the tape on the right side is secure. Fold the cardstock out of the way to the right like you're turning a page. You'll be able to admire the beautiful raised embossing and gain access to the stencil. Likewise, be sure the stencil is securely hinged with tape across the bottom. Gently lift the stencil and rotate it down out of the way, being careful not to tear it. Leave any interior pieces on the mat. Next, flip the embossed cardstock back into position and press it down firmly to the mat. You may also need a clipboard or something hard underneath to press against. I know it seems weird, but we leave the stencil hanging off the bottom of the mat for good reason. Go ahead and change out the debossing tip for the blade. Back at the computer, we do the now familiar dismiss, then cancel, then yes, to return to the prepare screen, where we now choose the white mat marked basic cut. This mat contains the final cut shape for our note card. Click continue. Select a material based on the white card stock you are using. Mine is medium weight, but I'm going to choose heavy weight just to be sure I get a clean cut. Again, because the mat is still loaded, it skips past the load tools and material step. So with the embossed card stock on the mat, the stencil out of the way, and the blade loaded, press the go button. Again, it does a mat check, a blade check, and taps on the dummy shape. It will then cut out the card outline and leave us with a debossed, scored, and cut note card face down on the mat. When it's done, you still don't want to unload the mat from the machine, but you can take your note card off the mat. Flip it over and fold it, and you'll see we have a lovely embossed design on the front of the note card. Such a nice deep emboss of a custom design. I love this technique. I'll admit this is a lot of work so far for one note card, but we took some steps along the way so that we could make multiple copies of the same design. Here's how. Take off the tape and remove any of the white card stock that's left, but leave the interior stencil pieces in place. Flip the stencil back up onto the mat and press down to secure it.
load another white sheet on top and tape as before. Click Dismiss, Cancel, and Yes to once again return to the Prepare screen. We don't need to do the pink mat again because the stencil is already cut and in place. So we pick up with the same steps to repeat the white deboss and white cut mats. You can repeat this as many times as the stencil stays secure, as long as you don't press the Unload button. Once you unload the mat, you'll most likely lose the precise positioning needed for embossing and will have to start over cutting a new stencil. My 2017 process lets you make a permanent stencil, but it doesn't let you cut out your embossing, so there's a trade-off there. I'll link that up for you, as well as other related files and information, so be sure to check the video description. I hope you'll enjoy using this flat embossing technique, and I look forward to seeing what you make with it. I love reading your comments, and I appreciate you sharing this video with your friends. Thanks so much for watching.